Hey everybody, it's Congressman Jimmy Raskin um, coming to you for my favorite time in the week. Um, I represent Maryland's beautiful 8th Congressional District, and this is our local hero show where we get to salute and honor the people who have served us with great distinction. And I'm about to introduce you to a remarkable resident of Rockville and public servant named Diane Pitts. And um, Diane uh, retired just a few years ago after 35 years in the employ of the federal government, where she worked at, among other places, the GSA, the Department of the Navy, and the Department of Homeland Security in different roles basically revolving around fire protection engineer, senior fire intelligence officer. And, you know, I represent um, the most educationally accomplished congressional district in the country. And Diane is no exception to this. She graduated from uh, West Point in 1984, but she also got her uh, degree in, um, I guess it's a certificate in fire investigative services, something like that. Um, and has served as an Army officer and Navy officer. Um, and all of her skills uh, were brought uh, into mobilized service on 9-11. And I want uh, to introduce you to Diane Pitts and then uh, ask her to correct all the mistakes I just made about her career, but then get right into how she got drawn into service on 9-11, how she ended up spending an entire week down uh, at the Pentagon. And uh, we'll take it from there. So. Uh, please welcome our uh, local hero uh, this week where we um, commemorate uh, the sacrifice and the service of people uh, who made um, a great commitment to the country on 9-11. And uh, some of them we lost and some of them we kept. And we're glad we kept you, Diane Pitts. So uh, congratulations on being our local hero. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it, sir. Um, so, but how did I do in terms of trying to uh, synthesize your amazing, dazzling career? Uh, I think you nailed it. Uh, the only thing I would say is that uh, I, in the Department of the Navy, I was a civilian. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I just want to make sure that I don't Good. offend any naval officers out there. <laughs> well, and the other thing that I need to say is that um, since 1986, in addition to your uh, amazing career in the federal government, you've also been a volunteer at the BCC Fire and Rescue Squad. Um, and you met your husband there, is that correct? That you met? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He was there. the daytime uh, supervisor. He was the daytime supervisor. So that, that speaks well for uh, volunteerism. Um, and, um, but you, uh, even after finding your husband there, you continue to be a BCC Rescue Squad volunteer. Um, you, um, you lost your husband in, what year was that? 2000. In 2000, and we're so sorry about the, the loss of George, and um, we know that that was tough on you and your two kids, uh, George and Kimberly, who are now 23 and 21. Um, but so thank you for your service, both to our local community through the BCC Rescue Squad. Amazing. That's a, a remarkable uh, entity that we all love and we treasure. And thank you for your service to us. Um, as a, a fire specialist, investigator, and expert in all these different aspects of uh, your federal service. But tell us about, tell us the story of 9-11 and feel free to go, to go into detail. Where were you uh, when the planes hit? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. And thank you again for, for this opportunity. Also for commemorating this, this, uh, this uh, time of year. Uh, so on that day, I was working for GSA and I was on my way to work. And when I got on the Metro, uh, it stopped a couple, couple stops short of where I was going to get off. And it was, was, it, it, it was unusual. It was at a station, but it was unusual. And it was a long stop. And I was in the front, the first uh, car, so I could hear over the radio a lot of yelling, screaming, just mayhem. And then a, um, a Metro officer came near me, not to me, but just was nearby. And from his radio too, I could hear a lot of just screams and just, uh, just mayhem and still unsure of what's going on. Uh, it took several minutes, about 10 minutes. We finally got moving again and they, they didn't get me to my stop, but they got me close and I walked the rest of the way to GSA 
And I went to go in and they, they turned us away. They said, no, uh, we're not, we're not open today. And I said, what's going on? And he pointed and I could see a plume of, of smoke in the distance. Didn't know where it was coming from. He just said, just please just leave. And, and I said, okay. So a long, arduous journey to get back. Everyone was in the Metro at this point. And so I finally made my way back to, uh, to the, the uh, Bethesda Metro station which is about six blocks from Bethesda Chevy Chase Rescue Squad, where I parked my car. And right next door was the church where I, my kids went to daycare. So as I'm walking back to the rescue squad and calling anyone I could call, I finally got a hold of my parents. And then they filled me into what was going on in New York and then that now at the Pentagon. And I figured that's what I had seen was the Pentagon on fire. And I said, okay, I said, let me get the kids and I'll, I'll stay with you guys. And they said, no, the rescue squad's been calling. They, they're looking for all hands on deck. They, they need you. And, uh, and I said, okay. So, and they said they would take care of the kids. So uh, it, it, was a tough, it was a tough walk to, to get back because I hadn't been really actively volunteering since my husband had passed, you know, uh, you're trying to handle two kids uh, and, and all. So it was tough and I'm getting a little, little like, upset here, but it's okay. Um, mainly because uh, I'd, I had been thinking maybe I should stop um, volunteering and it was tough, you know, because how do I, how do I do two kids and volunteer? But I had to make a decision. So I made it to the squad and I made my decision. I'm gonna be all back in to volunteering. So I presented myself and they said, please, uh, we have no apparatus left, not just to me. There was, there was a bunch of us. They said, please go ahead and um, go home and get some rest because we're gonna need you in the next couple of days. So I went home, I had all my gear with me because they said they'd take us from, from there. And sure enough, a couple hours later, they came, they picked me up and I thought I was gonna backfill to a, um, a, a DC fire station because right? I'm also a master firefighter EMT. And uh, that's what I was expecting. And lo and behold, when they stopped, we were at the Pentagon. And I was like, what's going on? Because it was a, a van full of us. Uh, you know, so I figured, you know, they were, they were swapping out some people. And they said, you're going to be manning the air truck for the night. And, and I said, alone? And they're like, yeah, good luck. And so they took the crew that was there, dropped me off. And, and then later on, I don't know, was with me or later on, uh, Jenny Farr Brockman uh, was also um, left off with me. Uh, so it was nice to have like someone else. Anyway, um, my job duty at that point was to provide lighting to the temporary morgue and to the, uh, to the first aid, but also to fill the air bottles of all the, uh, uh, of all the firefighters going in and out of the, the, the Pentagon. So that kept me very busy. And so is the air I, bottle, what is it? What's an air bottle? It's what you wear on your back. Oh, I'm sorry. So the S, yes, sir. The SCBA, the, the self-contained breathing apparatus. Uh, so um, the, the air truck is a specialized truck that uh, can actually generate its own air, can compress its own air. So I, I, we had unlimited amount of air. And so uh, I, I was swatch, swapping out the, the bottles. Uh, I mean, they don't wait there for you to fill it because it takes some time to fill. So I had a bunch of bottles out. They were coming, taken, and I just was busy as busy could be. About midnight or so, the operations moved from the outside of the Pentagon to center court, to the inside. So everything started to really die down. And so at that point, um, I did have a, a camera with me. At that point, um, I just went around and started documenting uh, the, the scene and, the, and what all was going on. And um, from there, uh, the, the one point I was talking to you a little bit about before was uh, what was significant was um, a, uh, a um, Medal of Honor winner had dropped off a flag at right outside of the, the perimeter at, at uh, the Channel 5 News. And um, two Marines came up and, you know, hours later and, and asked if they could take the, the flag and move it in because the the, the um, Medal of Honor winner had said, we have to get a flag over the Pentagon. We can't let them win. You know, this, we've, we've got to get a flag back. 
So they took the flag and they brought it inside. It took them hours. And so about three o'clock in the morning, it was decided to raise that flag to over top of the Pentagon. And so uh, I got pictures of that, I, of the, the flag raising. So that was, you know, you know, close to my heart. And then- um, uh, That's then a famous the, picture, isn't it? Uh, pardon? That's a famous picture, isn't it? Um, I, I have a, I have a picture that, um, oops, moving you. <laughs> this is one of the pictures that I took. I don't know if you can see it. Wow. Yeah. So, and, and that's over the hulk of the, uh, the fire crash rescue uh, truck that was brand new, uh, stationed there all the time at the, the Pentagon because it's, that's where the helicopter would land. Um, and so they, they were, uh, I thought it was poignant that they were raising the flag over, uh, you know, over a fire crash rescue in front of the Pentagon. Um, so anyway, uh, the, the night went on, the next day came, uh, I desperately required, requested to be relieved to, to get, you know, get some strength back. So, uh, I got relieved and, um, and then the next, uh, then later on that day was asked to go back to the Pentagon, uh, after a couple hours of sleep. And so um, I gathered all my stuff again. I went there and then I stayed at the Pentagon uh, through 9 uh, September 17th, and was providing decontamination and, um, and those type of tasks with, the, with, uh, with FEMA uh, for, for the duration of the time I was there. We, we lost um, 2,977 people on 9-11 uh, in the terrorist attacks. I believe we lost 55 military personnel uh, um, at the Pentagon, but we also lost a, a lot of uh, rescue people, a lot of firefighters and cops, a lot, of kind of, a lot of people who are doing the kind of work that you were doing. What, what was the spirit among the people like you who rushed into volunteer on that day? Sir, it, it couldn't have been more uh, more based in, in the heart. Uh, I mean, everybody was there united. We understood that we were under attack. My sister, Denise DeLauder, uh, also lives in Rockville, um, was stationed there. Uh, so she was actually called me the night before and was told me she was in Fort Huachuca, Arizona. But the actual place where the plane had hit was uh, was where her where her office was. She lost 28 uh, of her personnel, and there was a three-star general that was lost. That was her ultimate commander. I mean, it wasn't her immediate supervisor. Um, so I, it was not lost on me the gravity of the situation, and it wasn't lost on anyone else. And I sent out a request to that church next to the squad uh, for assistance. Um, and they, they rose to the occasion and, and produ produced a hundred uh, meals for a hundred people that um, I was able to bring down to the Pentagon uh, later on that week. Well, it was an extraordinary commitment that you and other people in your situation modeled to the country. And it really reverberated across the whole society and everybody really started pitching in and engaging to try to help uh, the families of the victims and to uh, restore what had been stolen from us um, that day in the terrorist attack. Um, I wonder, um, I could spend all day with you, Diane, but my staff will get mad at me. But I wonder if you would just reflect for a moment on these events and then how they changed your life since. Oh, so yes, sir. Uh, so, uh, what, what ended up happening in the wake of 9-11 uh, of was um, a requirement for the Pentagon to get uh, a fire marshal. So five months later, they had put out a request for um, a job opening for the fire marshal. So I went down, threw my hat in the ring and was able to get that job and didn't know what I was walking into, but it brought me to the epicenter of, of where I needed to be. And, and so I was able to serve my country at an incredible level there at the Pentagon, work with incredible people, all with the focus of not only rebuilding, but also uh, strengthening our country. 
Well, you, you made history then again as the very first fire marshal for the U.S. Department of Defense at the Pentagon, right? Um, yes, sir. You, you built the staff and you built the department there, and that's almost worth a, a whole other show. Um, Diane, um, you are a true local hero. You are a true just born community servant, and uh, we thank you. We thank your kids. We thank your whole family for what uh, you've done for us. And also, thank you for stepping up to keep uh, the memory of 9-11, uh, everything that we lost and everything that we fought for, alive. Um, and um, we salute you, and we are so proud to have you in our community. Thank you very much, sir. And if I also might say is thank you to the Bethesda Chevy Chase Rescue Squad for having something that helped me to get into it, the fire service as a whole, and also the state of Maryland, and of course, the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. And um, uh, thanks to everybody for tuning in to Local Hero. We'll see you next week.